Marshall. Thank you very much for tuning into the show. So we got something exciting here for you today. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Open Labs Miko because I've got one right behind me. Let's check it out. So here it is. It's the Miko. Uh, this is the Timberland Special Edition. So it's white and it has a little Timberland soak screen image on the front here, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you'll see that from the camera there. But let's take a look around at what this kind of has to offer on the front panel at first glance. So it's a 15 inch touch screen, uh, various knobs here that are assignable, uh, some buttons, uh, crossfader, mouse touchpad, um, QWERTY keyboard, five assignable sliders, transport controls, directional controls, some other assignable buttons here. Uh, transpose for the key for the key bed, uh, octave transpose up and down right here. And that's pretty much it. On the front, there is a Personas Firebox uh, with two inputs. On the back, you've got an additional two inputs and I believe six outputs. So it actually is quite literally an all-in-one music production station. This literally is a computer, a Windows-based computer. It's got an Intel motherboard in there. The processor in here is an Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600. I think that processor is pretty comparable to the AMD Phenom series, Phenom 2s, I think, somewhere, something like that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm just kind of going off of memory. Um, four gigs of RAM, 32-bit operating system. It runs Windows XP. This one here actually is Windows XP Service Pack 2. <laughs> so it doesn't even have Service Pack 3 on it, but hey, that's cool. So we can actually, uh, we can actually check this out. Let me, uh, let me reboot this thing. And we can see the glorious Windows. And we can switch to the screen cap. And there it is, Windows XP Open Labs Edition. <laughs> uh, pretty cool. And there it is. So Windows XP, like I said, and there's, this is somebody's previous uh, setup here. So there is a, an account, a Windows account for somebody, but we're gonna go into the Open Labs shell account. Uh, and I just wanna kinda show you guys around here a little bit. So on the screen capture, you can see here, we've got a uh, replaced start button with an Open Labs logo. You press on that and you've got various options here like play sounds, uh, record sequence MIDI apps help utilities and quit so if we go into play sounds uh, this is um, this is pretty cool so you've got Timberland Personas beat shop blah 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 there's various things even broken down into types of sounds uh, I don't really like I mean I understand why they did this because if you if you go into uh, Windows and trying to use the start menu with your fingers it's not the most convenient, convenient thing, but the way they've done this is, you know, it's about finger size, so that makes sense. And then actually the touch screen on here is very responsive. Uh, I do want to note though that I did actually clone the hard drive that was in here. It has a 500 gig hard drive. I did clone that to a solid state drive and that is actually what's running this. So it's a little bit snappier, a little bit quicker than what it would be running, running the traditional uh, hard drive. But let's take a look at some of these sounds. Let's go into this Timberland bank. Oh, play sounds, Timberland. And you've got uh, various Insonic uh, sound libraries in here. Let's take a look at the first one. Did I miss the click? I must have not clicked on it correctly. Let's try that again. There we go. Uh, this definitely was a lot slower to load versus the SSD. Uh, but yeah, here it is. Uh, let's pick a sound. Not too bad. Let's see what this is. So 
So cool. Uh, let's check the transport controls here. Oh yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound that awesome, but uh, not too shabby. So I think these things, you know, they, they always bragged about how many presets, at least in the videos I had seen when they'd go to like NAM or, you know, Sonic State would cover this. It's got like 10 million presets. It, I mean, it literally can have as many as your hard drive can hold. So, I mean, it, but it comes with, you know, various... Um, Various sound libraries like this in Sonic setup here. Let's go. Let's go check out the Persona stuff. I'm a big uh, Emu uh, Proteus 2000, so let's check out the Proteus. Oh, looks at that. they got Mofat Virtuoso Proteus X Composer. So Proteus X Composer. I have used this plugin before, actually. When I before I actually bought a Proteus 2000, I found this plugin, but because it's only 32-bit, it won't really run in a 64-bit version of like Ableton or something. So Unless, the, I wonder if there's some weird way to do like a wrapper or something around it to get it to run. But at any rate, here it is. It's the Proteus uh, 2000. So let's find some sounds. I don't know what this is. We're just going to play it. Not too bad. does work. Nice. This keyboard actually feels pretty good. I could do that all night, but let's uh, let's move on. On here does come uh, a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation pre-installed. It is called Reaper. And I'm sure some of you guys, especially if you're into music production, know what Reaper is. And uh, I've never used it, not even once. This is the first time I've actually even seen what Reaper really looks like up close. Um, I've always been either uh, Reason, Pro Tools, Ableton. Those are the DAWs that I've used in my musical journey so in addition to this uh we've got some midi stuff here uh to kind of configure the control surfaces from what i've read again i haven't really done a whole lot with this yet i just wanted to kind of show you guys what this thing came with this is uh, pretty much stock as far as i know i don't have a, a, an official manual other than what's on here and we'll talk about that in a second so i don't know what this actually came with if this is the stuff that it came with or if there's other stuff that's been added on here, or if it's, you know, I have no idea. But Mfusion is what they use to configure the control surfaces and everything else. Uh, I have not uh, messed with that yet, but I assume that's how we can assign things to these controls here. Um, let's see what else. Apps. So Mimic, let me switch here. Uh, Mimic, from what I understand, this is like, uh, it's kind of like Sample Robot, where you can actually sample incoming audio, um, and I, I think it'll, I don't know if it'll send MIDI out um, and actually trigger notes and play. Like, if you wanted to sample the full range of a hardware instrument, that's something like Sample Robot is great for that, because it'll send MIDI out, and it'll trigger the keys, and it'll hold it for a certain duration, and it'll sample, and I think it might even do at different velocities for you, I, I don't know for sure. This, I have no idea. I've never used Mimic. Um, 
but it comes on here. Uh, then you've got uh, Translator. Uh, this is OpenLab version of Translator Pro. Uh, please register later. Universal Sample File Converter. I have no idea what this is. And it, uh, as, I don't know if this means like you can convert. Uh, I have no idea what that is. We'll just uh, leave it there. Okay. Other applications. It's got a disk burner. Let's see what this is. Uh, CD Burner XP. Great. Look at that. Look at that glorious... Uh, 2000s, late 90s-ish looking thing there. I'm surprised it didn't have like Nero or something, you know? Or CDX. Well, I guess CDX would be more ripping, but... Anyway, DVD player. So you can actually play DVDs on here. I actually have a DVD. I did forget to mention there is a uh, DVD RW on the side. And we can go over here. We can go file, open DVD. And let's take a look what I got for y'all. Ooh, look at that fancy MGM. This is a RoboCop, everybody. So if you want to, uh, if you want to watch some RoboCop, you can do that from your Miko or Nico, which is pretty cool. Let's uh, hopefully we didn't jump to too much of an inappropriate scene here. Oh, there it is. There's RoboCop. Okay, so DVD, DVD software, which that's pretty cool. All right, so go back into apps. That's pretty much it for that. And help. Now, this is where this gets kind of cool to me. Um, oh, we'll just mute that. So you got Infusion, Tutorials, Reaper, Quick Start, uh, Proteus, Quick Start. Various tutorials laid out here for you, which is nice. Because uh, you can watch a short video and at least get you up and running fairly quick. I do appreciate that, actually. Uh, I think they could have gone a little bit, a little bit further with it, but all right, we got some manuals. So the only manuals that come on here are for Carson. Now Carson, we'll talk about that in a second, um, and then Reaper. Uh, Carson kind of takes VSTs and it can actually set them up to play as an array. Let me see if I can remember how to even get into that. So here we have an example of a bunch of VSTs all in Carson that you can trigger all at once, basically. You can create like a super patch of VSTs from out of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Carson. Okay. <laughs> That's too much fun. All right. Uh, so yeah. Um... So help, uh, we got the manuals, remote support, which none of this is gonna work, obviously. First of all, I don't have this on the internet, and second of all, the company does not exist anymore. The website does not exist. Uh, you can go into the uh, Wayback Machine and pull up old versions just to kind of see what the site looked like. And actually, it's pretty cool, because I went on there and I was able to find kind of some of the list pricing of this stuff, at least from that website. Pretty cool. Now, so in the Utilities folder, this is where you can get things like your audio interface, um, to set things up there. That's the firebox. Um, uh, see utilities. Let's go back in there. There's the mixer for the firebox. Okay. So cool. We digging it. All right. Pretty neat. Uh, also in utilities, they've got some navigational stuff. I don't know what this is. What is this? Oh, that's a on-screen keyboard. They did make versions of this where the control portions here, the proprietary control surfaces could be swapped out and you could put different stuff or you can order it with like without the QWERTY keyboard and instead get like a, a bank of uh, pad controllers or something like that. And especially in the later models, they really started doing a good job of implementing some of these different control surfaces that were actually a little bit more functional. This is uh, OK, I guess. But I mean, five five faders like I don't know, I would have rather had some more knobs. Uh, let's see what this is. Uh, welcome to System Restore. Okay, <laughs> so System Restore from here. I guess that's good. Uh, I don't remember XP System Restore being super great. Uh, what is this? 
X Touchware. I think this is to configure the touch screen. Uh, we're not gonna mess with that because it seems to be working pretty good. And more utilities. About, what does about say? Oh, uh, Open Lab Shell version 1.0, build 1002. Copyright 2003, 2004, Open Labs Inc. So does that mean they made updated versions of the shell? I have no idea. Utilities, uh, files, projects. There's, is there a project in here? What is this? Uh, wow, that actually has, what happens if I do that? Oh, this, oh, it's got a notepad. There we go, see what else we got. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So then when you, when you go into quit, that's when you can shut down. Oh, also in utilities, you can go to windows. So this basically takes you out of the shell, puts you in the regular desktop. You can see the previous owner did have Cubase Studio 4 on here, but there's no uh, like ignition key. If I try and launch this, it's gonna give me an error that there's no key. Uh, yeah, application, no e-license connected e-licensor so can't run cubase that's a bummer uh i would have really liked to have taken a look at cubase because i've never used cubase nope have not and that's pretty much it ladies and gentlemen this is the miko my plan for this is to tear this thing apart and i have a computer in the other room there that's for my la uh, my live studio setup for live performances and i'm going to put the guts of that into this and hopefully i can get everything to work uh so that i can run modern hardware in this chassis basically i'm going to take out the old motherboard uh and the old power supply stick in my stuff and and away i will go and hopefully this will drive my whole entire setup so I understand that there's some issues that people have had trying to get the drivers converted to 64-bit, whatever. I have no idea. Windows 10 updates. People have been successful at upgrading these units, though. And that's one of the things that made me go ahead and pull the trigger on this. Also, when I bought this, it was broken. So I got an extremely good deal on it. And the thing is, is because this is simply a Windows-based PC using pretty much off-the-shelf components, I was pretty confident as long as there wasn't an issue with one of these proprietary control surfaces or maybe the touch panel that I could probably fix it because it's just computer parts in here. Uh, again, the biggest issue is going to be compatibility with the software, which you cannot get anymore, drivers, which you cannot get anymore. Uh, but there is a community out there on Facebook and places that have done and archived a lot of this stuff, which is great. So you can probably find some help if you need it. I might need it myself when I go through that process and you know, I'll make some videos about this once I've got that up and running. Um, but yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, in my opinion, this is a very novel piece of equipment. Uh, I could see it being extremely useful, especially something like this, it's fairly compact. I mean, a laptop, it's, it's not gonna be obviously as thick, but this is basically a full blown PC with an audio interface, uh, MIDI controllers, a uh, QWERTY keyboard all at your fingertips, a touch screen that works well, it's pretty big. The screen gets nice and bright, plenty of outputs, plenty of inputs. Well, not a huge amount of inputs, but you know, I will rectify that. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I could see that the biggest issue people had when, I, you know, I, I've watched some videos of people and read comments from people when these were being debuted talking about it's ridiculous amount of money for this. This this one, actually, I think these, um, the Mikos, which are the smaller ones, were probably around $3,500 US, which that's, I mean, you start kind of getting into the territory where you could buy a laptop, a MIDI controller, and an audio interface for probably less than that. Now, is it in a nice, uh, convenient package? No, not necessarily, but at the same time, like, money talks and... Uh, it's, and most people, you know, they probably even already had a computer and really all they would need is a MIDI controller and an audio interface and they're on their way. So I, I can see where this might have rubbed some people the wrong way. But for certain use cases in particular, the one I'm kind of advocating for is to have this run a live setup and not have to worry about a laptop. Not only that, this keyboard is going to be functional 
in my setup. And I've got a touch screen to, to do things. This is extremely, extremely helpful in my opinion. I think it's gonna work very, very well. Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. It's, uh, it's going good. All right, let's do it. Let's do a proper Windows XP logout here. All right, let's do that. Uh, 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 uh. Power off. Later.